Greetings, beloved. I want to take this time to greet you all in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Saints, I'm very grateful that we have a study. We have taken time aside to commune together to study God's Word. We are living in very interesting times. Signs are fulfilling before us on a daily basis, saints. We are seeing the signs of the times. Brother Sipet did a study this past week. The attempt, the, the Trump uh, uh, assassination, the uh, Trump uh, attempt assassination. And we can clearly see, saints, that the world is in a verge of a stupendous crisis. Jesus is going to come very soon. Now, what I want to study with you today is not this crisis of the National Sunday, Lord, no, that is going to come. But I want to study with you the crisis that comes to us individually on a daily basis. A crisis the shaking, a hard trying time for us. And I want us to see this, that with this experiences, God is trying to prepare us for the greater crisis before us. Before we begin, I want to invite you for um, a word of prayer before we open the word of, we open the word of God. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the time that you have given us. We are grateful for this opportunity we pray in God's in especially that you may be with us now lord as we are going to open your word we pray that lord jesus may be said before us we may see him lord as we have never seen him before a revelation of his character may be so clear to us that it will be clear course to us that jesus is full of love that he is full of long suffering and goodness and abundant in truth we ask that the Holy Spirit may be present with us to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of the judgment to come. Please, Lord, bring our hearts to a point, Lord, where they can be broken and we can accept Jesus fully in our lives and we can prepare for the crisis before us. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Saints, consider with me First Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. There are many things that the Bible speaks about that will bring about the shaking or the crisis. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressingly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Paul is writing to Timothy. This is a prophecy that is going to be fulfilled when? In the latter times. This applies to those who believe in the third angel's message, to those who have the faith. And we can see clearly this. The Bible says that some will what? Uh, some shall depart from the faith. So those who have the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments of God, the followers of Christ, the Bible applies this prophecy to them. And it's interesting because we clearly see there what causes the separation. The Bible says it is the doctrines, it is the teaching. And these individuals are seduced by the evil spirit and they give heed to the doctrines of devils. The doctrines, the winds of doctrines that are blowing now inside the church, God is allowing them so that they may reveal, so that they may test, so that they may shake those things that can be shaken and that will not remain if they are going to be shaken out or they will remain. So, so God brings the, the winds of doctrines, the teaching, so to reveal to us what will be shaken and what will remain. In John, in John the sixth chapter, Jesus gives a powerful testimony to his disciples. And it's interesting. Jesus speaks of himself as the bread of life, you know, come from heaven. And he says, we must eat of this bread. We must drink of his blood. You know, if we do not have, we do not have life within ourselves. We must, we, we must eat. He must become part of us. And it's interesting because in verse 61 or 60, the Bible says, many, I want you to note that, this is the disciples, 
Many therefore of his disciples, when, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? How many of them? The Bible says many. So it was not a small group of people. Many of them, when they had the state testimony, they had, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? They were offended by this straight testimony. In fact, you can see from verse 65 or 66 that from that point, the Bible says they were shaken out. They were separated from the truth and from Jesus. From 66, the Bible says from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They separated from Christ. And what caused the separation? It is the straight testimony of the truth. The testimony to the Laodicean church. The straight message of truth. Unadulterated truth, saints. This is what we are speaking about. Now, I want, I want us to consider Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. A principle that Solomon brings here with respect to our daily, the daily crisis that God brings to us. The shakings that God brings to us on a daily basis. We are going to look at this with um, the, some aspect of the life of Peter. I want us to see this principle from Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. Solomon says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Now, the day of adversity there can mean a day of crisis, a day of trial, a day of testing. That is the day of temptation. When we, are, when we are tested and pushed into a certain direction, that certain things of ourselves, certain things about ourselves are revealed. Now, we may think that we have strength. We may think that we have more faith. We may think that we, may, we have more courage. And we may think that we can stand the test of time. But it's interesting that this verse says that the only way of knowing, you know, uh, to gird our strength, whether we have more strength or less strength, whether we have more faith or less faith, whether we are more courageous or we are cowardice, whether we can have integrity to stand for the truth and not compromise, that can only be revealed to us through a time of crisis and a time of shaking, you know, a time of testing when that is revealed to us, that, 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 that they are certain that we can be sure of certain things, that we can be sure of certain things of our character and not be aware that there are certain elements in us of failure, of compromise, you know, certain elements in us, you know, of, um, of compromising the truth. And we may really think that we are actually secure, you know, in our experience with Jesus. But there is a knowledge that can be hidden from us, you know, of ourselves. And the only way that this is revealed, these defects of our characters are revealed, it is only through the shakings and the crisis that God brings to us on a daily basis. Consider with me, John chapter 13, this is very interesting. Jesus, this is the last hours Jesus is with his disciples. They have just had the Lord's Supper. He's instituted the Lord's Supper. I want you to, to consider verse 36. It's a, something I want us to see, some aspect about the life of Peter here. Verse 36, Peter, it says, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, Whither thou goest, Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. When Peter made this confession, it was a genuine confession. He was not a hypocrite saint. The inspiration is clear about that. The Bible says that he made this confession saying he is ready to give his life for Jesus' sake. Look at what Jesus says to him. Jesus answered, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Look at this, saints. 
Peter is sure in his own experience. He feels secure. He is self-confident. He is established in some way. He says that he will die for Jesus. And what does Jesus say? Jesus reveals something about Peter that Peter does not know. That he will deny him. And what does Peter do? Look at verse Luke, uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I want us to see verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may swift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This is a warning that Jesus is giving to Peter of what Jesus, of what Satan has desired of the rest of the disciples. And Jesus reveals to Peter that he is praying for him because Satan has desired to sift him as wheat. Sift him as wheat. And he says, when thou hast converted, strengthen thy brethren. Look at what the response of Peter is. He said, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Both into prison and to death. He says, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Saints, Peter could have said, Lord, thank you for that revelation. Thank you that you have revealed to me that Satan is desiring to swift me to have me and sweep me as weed and that you have lord prayed for me he could have thanked the lord for that revelation and thank for god thanked him that he is praying for him but rather saints peter is steadfast in his own confidence in self-confidence that he is ready to die for jesus to go to prison to, for jesus to die for jesus and jesus further reveals to him that he will deny him thrice. He will deny him thrice. I wanted us to see something just very simple here, saints. That there is a certain knowledge, you know, that of, of Peter that Peter did not know about himself. Even when Jesus revealed this to him, he did not accept that revelation. And Jesus allowed a crisis to reveal that knowledge to him that was hidden and concealed in his own hearts, the defects of his own character, that he is able to, you know, that there is this element in him of failure, that he's this element of compromise, of not standing for truth, that he is not what he thinks he is. Jesus who had revealed this to him, but he did not accept that revelation. And the only, the only thing that Jesus could do is to allow a crisis, a shaking to reveal that to him, which he did, which he did. And that's how I want us to look at the shakings that are taking place in our daily life, in our daily experiences. That when a crisis hits, when a crisis hits, a trial, it is God's way of revealing to us our own hearts, our own the deformity, the, 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 the defects of our own character. You know, for us to see that we are not long-suffering, for us to see that we have no strength so that we can, have more, we can ask for more strength, for us to see that we don't have faith so that we can plead and ask for more faith. We can be, you know, see that we are not prayerful enough and we can start to plead and pray more, you know. So the crisis and the shaking is more to reveal to us the knowledge of ourselves that we do not know about ourselves. And that's the aspect, saints, of the shaking that I wanted us to, to see. Trials that God allows to take place in our own minds. They are a revelation. They are the tokens of God's love communicating to us, you know, the desire that God has to transform our own lives, to transform our character and to change us into his own likeness. To change us into his own likeness. How do we survive the crisis? How do we survive the shaking? 
you know how do you prepare an individual how does god prepare an individual for the greater crisis of the sunday law it is to give the individual preliminary crisis tests small tests that are to prepare the individual for the greater crisis and for the greater test that is going to come before the world that is going to you know grab the hold with an overwhelming surprise and how does god does how how does god do this it is to give us this test it is to give us the seekings on a daily basis so that we may be able to be prepared for the greater crisis saints there is some things about yourself that you do not know the knowledge of yourself that is hidden from you you can be as sure as you think you you are you know about your experience with Jesus but it is only a crisis that reveals certain aspects of yourself so instead of looking to ourselves instead of being selfish what Jesus wants us to do through the time of crisis when that happens when that knowledge is revealed to us he wants us to look to him that is the key to victory that is the key to go through the shaking to go through the time of crisis it is not to look at our own weaknesses and failures it is to you know turn all the focus to jesus from ourselves to jesus the offer and finisher of our faith look at what jesus look at what peter look at what david says sorry look at what david says in the book of psalms chapter 16 psalms 16 I am going to read to you verse 8. Psalm 16, verse 8. Psalm 16, verse 8. Look at this. He says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. In other words, there is, I shall not be shaken. How often has David set the Lord before him? He says, I have set the Lord always always saints i want to say this the reason why we are daily failing the reason why we are always failing on a daily basis we are failing and falling it is because we are not setting the lord always before us how do we set the lord always before us not often but he says not sometimes he says always he says because I know that the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be shaken. How do we set the Lord before us? When you read, when you read inspiration, Ellen White says in Desire of Ages, he says in Desire of Ages, he says, we should spend a thoughtful hour in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp the scene. And he speaks of what is going to happen. He says, our confidence in him will be constant. Our love will be quickened and we'll, we'll, be, we'll have more of the spirit of Christ. That is desire of ages. We'll have more of the spirit of Christ. Saints, Satan is playing a game of diversion is to divert our attention from Jesus and his truth. Is to divert the attention from Jesus and his truth. Consider this quotation in Great Controversy 488. Ellen White says, Satan invites or invents unnumbered scams that we may not dwell upon the very truth which we ought to be best acquainted. The great deceiver hates the great truth that brings to view an atoning sacrifice and all-powerful mediator. He knows that with him, all things depend on diverting the mind from Jesus and his truth. Do you see that, saints? One of the things that Satan knows and that what he does is to divert the mind from Jesus. If he can take our focus from Jesus, the sacrifice upon the cross, if he can take our mind from Jesus and the truth, he knows that we are going to fail. We are going to be shaken out. We are going to fail and faint. And we are not going to make it through the crisis. 
So the key for victory, beloved, the key for victory, David says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken or be moved. How do we do that? We consider him upon the cross. We consider him upon his sanctuary. We are going to close, saints, with this verse. In Hebrews, I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that enjoyed such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be worried and faint in your mind. That is if we do not consider him. That is if we don't consider him as we should. We are going to faint. We are going to be wearing saints in our walk with him. I want you to really take this point very seriously, saints. Always set the Lord always before you. The cross, saints, is only our safety. The only way we survive the crisis, the only way we survive the shaking, it is to consider Jesus, is to look at him. There is something about the cross, saints, that does something to our hearts. That's, that does something to us. That does something to our character, saints. And Satan knows this. That's why he diverts the mind from Jesus in his truth. Even in the wilderness, saints, they were, just, they were supposed to just look at the, the, se the serpent and be saved. When they would take their, off, their eyes off that serpent, that brazen serpent, they would be beaten and they would die. They would be beaten and they would die. Let us close with the word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you have revealed. We pray that you may help us. We ask for the Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you may help us. And give us, Lord Father, a different attitude, a different way of looking at the crisis that we meet on a daily basis. The trials that you allow our way. That is a way, Lord Father, of revealing to us the defects of our own character. We pray that we may, Lord Father, not look at our failures and our faults, but we may run to Jesus while there's still time. Please, Lord, help us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name.